From Eyewitness News, this is the Tarbox Toyota Hyundai Friday Night Football Wrap. Welcome to the 2014 season debut of the high school football wrap. I'm Yanni Caracas. Every Friday at this time, sit down, relax, and enjoy all the football action from around Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts. Tonight's week one action featured mostly non-league games. Let's start with the four-time defending state champs in D1, Hendrickin. Banner night for Keith Croft and the Hawks, but the Panthers wanted to spoil the party. Mike Caparco finds Mark Conti downfield. One captain to another, 31-yard score, 6 nothing Johnston. Back come the Hawks on the goal line. Quarterback John Topa keeps this one himself. He scoots him for the two-yard score. PAT good. Hawks take the 7-6 lead. More from Topa. This kid can do it all. Star baseball player, a former hometown hero of ours, and look at him go 80 yards on the run. They're not going to catch him. Hedrickin begins with the defense of their title, 34-6. Thompson Tories Cranston East team hosting one socket. Second half of this one, Thunderbolts up 25 7, maintaining that lead with defense. Malik Gavik sniffs out the run play and gets the big tackle. Villanovans trying to maintain the drive. Miguel Raymond goes deep downfield. Austin Walter waiting. That's a big game, getting one socket down to the red zone. But again, the Bolts defense would stop them. Jay Bast all over this play. The tackle in the backfield. Cranston East wins 38 7. Barrington at Holman, second quarter. The Eagles Jake DeMarco finds Jake Sly, who while getting tackled, slyly tosses it to Nicholas Jensen. Jensen does the rest, breaking a tackle, spinning into the end zone, 14-0 Eagles. End of the half now, DeMarco finds Jensen in the flat. And again, Jensen gets to the end zone. This one, all Barrington. Eagles roll, 35-12. Big crowd on hand in Portsmouth. Patriots hosting Rodgers. Pat's offense in gear. Ryan McDonald takes the handoff. He finds his way into the end zone. Nicely done. Vikings answer, though. Koran Bostic. He's a good player. Calls his own number. And 50 yards later, he's got a touchdown. Count him 50 yards, but the Portsmouth defense kept pace. Albert Davis would have the fumble recovery at the bottom of this pile, scrapping Patriots blow by Rogers, 39 to 19. How about the Townies of East Providence and Mount Pleasant going at it? First quarter, EP strikes first. Tristan Casey, he finds Pater through the defense to put EP in control early. More from Tristan Casey. This kid had himself a ball game, getting outside, going all the way for the score. EP gets a nice win over Mount Pleasant, 40 to 24 the final in that one. New Cumberland head coach Josh Lima looking to get his Clipper career started off on the right foot, hosting D2 St. Ray's. Saints defense tough, Darius Stewart the sack for the big loss. Saints up 21-7 at the break. Opening drive of the second half started well for Cumberland. Tyler Calabro calls his own number. That's a very good call. The QB cuts through the defense, turns on the Jets, just shy of the goal line, but that would be a big stop because the Saints stopped the march. Fourth and goal, Josh Alves, the denial. St. Ray's holds on for the 21-14 victory. Defending D2 champs West Warwick traveling down to South Kingstown, taking on the Rebels. The Wizards defense midseason form. Rebels inside the red zone. Fourth down denial. Chris Boudreaux, Luis Salazar, and David Lamontagne all teaming up for the tackle. A little bit later, more from Lamontagne. The pick. West Warwick begins its title defense with a 20-6 win over SK at Curtis Corner Middle School. Coventry Oakers coming off an injury fund win over D1 Cranston East, visiting North Kingstown, but the home team having all the fun in this one, David Poirier. David's got a nose for the end zone, pile drives his way through, gives the skippers a 13-6 advantage. A little later, home team dials up the D, Jacob Porter. He gets his hands under the ball, heads up, INT for him. Then North seals it, Matt Madeline. He hands it off to Jake Gillis. And look at Gillis go, nothing but green grass. NK doubles up Coventry, 40 to 20 is the final. Let's head down to East Greenwich, Avengers hosting Burrowville. Scoreless first quarter, Broncos driving. Isaiah De Silva, he's gonna go up top to Riley Tupper. Terrific pitch and catch to give Burrowville the lead. Back comes EG, this is Nick Andriozzi slicing through the D. He gets into the end zone, a back and forth affair all night. Burrowville with a nice win over East Greenwich, 32-26. Welcome back to the show. Let's dive right back into the action. Mount Hope at a D2 paying a visit to Middletown at a Division 3. 
One of the preseason picks in D3 Middletown hosting Mount Hope. Loose ball. Huskies Jason Pompey. He's all over it. Now we'll set up the offense, but the Islanders like to dial up the defense too. Christian McGowan just strips this clean. Look at that. Give me that. That leads to this. Jared Nevis hands off to Bruce Philippone. Philippone gets in. Middletown rolls 36 to 6. A little further north, rally speech at the half. The Northmen trail Moses Brown by three scores at home, but this play certainly not helping North Smithfield. Moses Brown's Andrew Howard turbo boost, leaving North Smithfield defenseman in the dust all the way for six more. That would put the Quakers up 28 zip. But the home team not ready to call it a night just yet. After a punt, the Northmen force a fumble, giving them excellent field position and setting up this next play. QB leaves the pocket, scrambles. He's got a big target, and he won't be brought down. That's a touchdown, but it's Moses Brown winning tonight, 35-13. Let's get emotional. Beautiful sunset over the crowd in Central Falls. The Warriors hosting classical crossover battle. Defense playing a big part. Purple up 7-6. That's Jason Almeida Arulo not having it. The pick ends the drive quickly, but just before the half, Classicals, Gay Myers does Jason one better. That's a pick six. Look at him put his hand in the air. Purple roll on the road, 36-7, the final. Let's head over to Shea. Raiders hosting Lincoln. Very first play from scrimmage. The Lions' Nathan Fay gets the carry. Watch this cut. He gets through the defense, and he is off to the races. Look at him go. 65 yards to the house. Extra point, no good. 6-0 Lincoln. Back come the Raiders, third and goal. Chris Duarte dives into the end zone on the keeper. That puts Shea ahead 7-6. More from the Raiders. Duarte rolls left. Check out the strength throwing across his body, finding Val DePina in the end zone. Shea beats out Lincoln 41-21. to So we got a little taste of what this season has to offer with tonight's action. But for a full season preview, I brought in longtime Providence Journal high school writer, John Galuli to preview this 2014 year. I began by asking him about Hendrickson's unprecedented four straight D1 titles. I mean, in Division One, it's so tough. Uh, the the caliber or the competition is the best we have. So to repeat that year after year after year is amazing. And you know, that's the question: Will they win five? And uh, they they were voted number one in the preseason poll of the media people. So. Right. They're there. So that brings me to my question. What does Hendrickin have to do to win five? Is it a certain player? Is it a certain game? What do they have to do to raise the trophy again? No, I think it's an all-around team effort. Uh, yes, they have some great talented individual players. They have in the past. They have, they have some great skilled players right now. But I think the key will be whether they can rebuild that offensive line and their defense. You win, you win Division I with, with defense. There's yeah. no question about it. Division II may be the division to watch. You have West Wark, the defending champs, Moses Brown, and then Mount Pleasant jumps from D3 to D2. So you have three teams that played in championship games last year. How do you see D2 panning out? D2 is going to be very interesting because it's divided into two subdivisions, uh, and all three of those teams that you mentioned have been put in uh, 2B. Uh, so you have the two okay. teams that played in Division Three Super Bowl last year, the defending champion, all in that one division, that one subdivision. It's going to be fun. How about Division Three and Four? Any team to watch that you think could make waves in Rhode Island this year? Well, again, with, with Moses Brown and Mount Pleasant moving from three up to two, that opens it up. And I think some of the ones that are there all the time, particularly Middletown. Okay. Uh, Middletown has won a couple uh, before last year. So I think Middletown's probably the team to watch. East Greenwich lost Andrew Miner. They're, they're a great quarterback, but you know they're always there. So it's going to be there, there's some teams that have a chance, but I'd look at those two. As we talk about teams, let's talk about a player to watch. Um, maybe the kid from Hendrickson, Moses, who uh, is heading to UMass. Do you think he'll be the star this year to watch? Well, he's one of the ones we watch, and obviously the defense has to watch. Uh, right. Yeah, he's one of the fastest uh, athletes in the state of Rhode Island because he's a track champion. Uh, and now he's got Johnny Topas coming back in, as a quarterback for him. So he's got somebody that can throw. And uh, those two teamed up for the touchdown in the yeah. round robin game. So, yeah, it, it'll be interesting watching him. And Topa was a pretty good baseball player for the Hawks this spring. Uh, let's talk about the Thanksgiving uh, games. A lot of them aren't league games anymore, maybe glorified exhibitions. If
if you will, like the Cranston East West game um, won't be deciding a champion like it has in years past. What do you make of the uh, change in RIIL? Well, I think it's good. I and mean, the reason they're doing it is they no longer will have those Tuesday night playoff games and then have to come back for the Super Bowl just five days later. Right. Uh, they will still play uh, uh, the Thanksgiving Day games, like you said, they'll be non league, but they're also going to play like Cranston East, Cranston West, LaSalle East Province. Right. They're playing another league game earlier during the regular season. So okay. they're going to have a, a game that's going to count in the standings. Right. Then on Thanksgiving Day, they'll have that great traditional game. All right, high school action began last week in Massachusetts. Week two, a big one in Fall River. Neighbors Durfee and Bishop Connolly meeting up. Hilltopper first year head coach Taylor Brown looking to bring home his alma mater's first win in over two years. Team fired up. Fourth down, Jaron Vieira finds Colby Cabral. Good for a Hilltopper first down. Nicely done. A little later, that leads to this. Vieira hands off to Michael Correa. Mike sweeps into the end zone. Durfee defense then protects the lead. Brian DeMello, the stuff. Home team gets their first win since 2011. 21-6 is the final.